Today, we're going to be taking a look at heat sink number six. Now, what's been interesting is all the comments you guys have had, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, even though this is copper, because of some of the things we've learned and some of the things you guys have said uh, on some of the stuff that you, many of you have uh, mentioned, discussed, and talked about, I'm kind of curious about there may be two more we might try, but I don't know yet, so I'll hold that thought. And I'm eager now to get in to this one, which is the third of the copper heat sinks and of a technology that some of you have commented about. But one we're getting ready to look at now, this is Ice PC M.2 2280 SSD Pure Copper Heat Sink Cooler. Heat sink with silicone based thermal pad for cooling M.2 SSD. This needs to be the Ice PC Copper Heat Sink Kit for a 2280 M.2 drive. How's that? I want to welcome everybody. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. I want to thank you for joining us. One thing this does have with the, uh, or actually two things that this copper heat sink has in common with the previous, even though that was specified for a laptop and this is not, they're both copper. However, this copper has some machining done in it. So as we pull it out of the package, we're going to look and compare. Another nice thing I like about this, the pure copper 401W over MK has a higher thermal conductivity than pure aluminum at 237W over MK. I want to mention that and reference it because it also is relevant to the pads as we later change those out for a separate video. But this is strictly about the stock. So we're going to do an unboxing, an examination, then we will do an installation and we'll do a test just like in the other ones and uh, see what's in the package. So this is from Ice PC. So we should see three items in the package. And this is the first one that has talked about O-rings that actually delivers O-rings. And there's the copper, of which we have three black O-rings and it looks like one or two, yeah, three black O-rings and then two heat bands. Most interesting. Nothing else in the package. No instructions. So if there's instructions, I'll mention it. If there's not, I'll mention it. So with my manual dexterity, getting this package open with a micro screwdriver, let's see what we've got. It's got some weight to it, I'll say that. It's a nice piece of copper. Take those two rings, set those aside. And one of you mentioned about the machining process and how they do that, which is quite fascinating. We'll get into that in the summation. What I want to focus on is how well this is going to, uh, going to work. And let's look at this in relation to the previous heat sink. It's a thin piece of copper, but it's been machined so that apparently it will maximize the heat transfer from the M.2 drive to the heat sink. And with these serrations, I'm hoping that's going to do a transfer. Now, ideally, that should be a composite material with a thin material of copper and something else bonded to the surface. But I'm just, I'm just commenting. Again, we're going with a stock item, a piece of copper that's been machined, and it's got some weight to it. We're going to put a pad on it, and then we're going to measure it and see how it stands up on top of the uh, M.2 drive. Lengthwise, we're good to go at 2280 because we want to make sure we clear that connector and that we clear that connector as well. So we're good. We'll check our thermal pad for size and that looks good. No cleaning cloths with this one as we had with the previous. And of course the three black O-rings and then the two clear thermal bands. What's interesting, Ice PC refers to their cooler as a uh, heat exchanger. Keep that thought in mind. It's important to remember. We'll see how effective it is. So we're going to peel the pad off and I'll use a micro screwdriver for that to help. And I save those covers so I can put them back on. And this looks clean and polished. Very clean and polished. You can see how shiny that is. A little bit oversized, which is good. It lines up nice. And I'm going to do a dry assembly on the drive just to check my alignment. And that alignment looks good. I want to get that in a position where you can see that connector from this corner to that notch. And we look good to go. So the next thing I'll do peel off the back side with the help of a micro screwdriver. They don't give the rating of the thermal pad, they only give the rating of copper and aluminum. And that's important to note going forward when we get into testing the other pads. This is stock, remember that. We want to see how this performs, we need a baseline. It'd be nice if the vendors, but uh, as they say, your results may vary. So. This is just a starting point. This is not a stopping point. But this will give us a unit of measure someplace to uh, start. I'll place the drive down, put the heat sink on top, and I'm watching the connector 
on this end as I'm watching the connector on this end for that notch. And I just want to clear it. And I'm clear both of them. I like the length on this better. I'm good on this end. And I'm good on this end. So with that, put that on the card. Slide that in. Perfect. Clear that connector notch. Come down on this end. We clear that bushing. Drop that pin in. And we're good. And clearance is good. Again, nothing on the back. But we've done that before and we've cleared that one component. So uh, that's going to look good. Okay, now I'll go back and put the bands on. I want to dry run to make sure we were in a good position. And we are. So I should be able to take these with a thumb and pull these around on the other side. And those are tight, as they should be. I want to keep them on the high spots, but they just dropped right into the narrow spots. It's twisted in the slot, so I want to untwist it. Got it. Hold it with an index finger, pull it around, and over. And take the micro screwdriver in between, pull it on around, straight. Twist it again, twist it on the back, straighten it, good to go. So I've got those two clear bands on, one here, one here. Those two should do us. This is just a test. Now, if we were going to leave this on here, I'd probably put... Uh, a couple of those other O-rings on, but I think I'll be good with this. Assembly. Well, I'm curious. That end's good. That end locks down good, just like we had. Okay, good. In we go. Nice clearance. And what you're seeing there is that band, and that band right there. As I was saying, what I'm curious about, knowing the parameters for the drives we've had, how this is going to perform. Now, the first copper, we got to uh, 61 degrees. I have to look. I can't remember all that in my head. And the second one, we got at 69 degrees, which to me, the second one was more impressive than the first one, considering is a thin piece of copper. What I'm curious is, based on 61 to 69, how this will perform. Uh, because for the parameters of two drives, that's not too bad. Even the best one we had, which was the third test, and that was the Sabrent heat sink, but my gosh, that thing was huge with the heat pipes, but I sure did like the results. So given the parameters of what we're dealing with, because we're talking about two on a dual card, we're talking about four on a quad card, based on the size and weight, I'm curious to see how this works and how it compares to the other two. Ah, uh, the anticipation. So we need to get this in the box. And we're going to put this in the first eight lane slot. Card is secure in the slot. And the bracket is secure. And our test platform. This is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designair, where we have two 16 lane slots, two 8 lane slots, and in the primary 8 lane slot, bifurcated in the BIOS, four lanes and four lanes because we have two M.2 NVMe drives on the Supermicro dual M.2 NVMe adapter. And the primary drive that we're going to test on is the WD Black SN850. So, what we're going to do now is go into Windows. We'll test. We don't have to go to the BIOS since everything's bifurcated. We'll identify the drive. We'll look at telemetry for heat as we look at the thermistor. We'll look at the uh, speed of the drive, and then we'll watch our minimum, maximum, and average. See how this plays out. Plug in power. Turn on. Energize. System is booting up. We can see the video card lights up. We can see the post codes. We'll also hear posts because we have a PC speaker plugged in that you can't see. And once we get through power on self-test, then we'll go into Windows, run our test. First things first, we'll identify the drives, Windows flag E, this PC, WD Black SN850 on D drive, and the Samsung 980 Pro on F drive. We're testing D with a heat sink. Using hardware info, sensors only, and we're going to look at drive telemetry for those two drives. The first one where the test is going to be at, which is the WD Black SN850, says right now we're the current minimum max and average at 37 degrees, going up to 38. And the second drive that you can eyeball if you want, which is the Samsung 980 Pro sitting right next to it at 38 degrees, two thermistors, one on the memory, one on the chip. This is the one we're going to focus on 
as we run Crystal Disk Mark, which will be the D drive, one terabyte, and a one gig test file. Run the test. I'll highlight, and we can watch the temperature. Now with the first read, we'll establish the speed of the drive, which also gives us the speed of the interface. Even though the drive is spec at PCI Express 4.0, second generation of 7,000 megabytes, the card, the Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter, is spec at PCI Express 3.0. But as you can see, we're achieving the speeds. Now, when we get to the second numbers on the right, that's where we actually achieve our hottest temperature. And we'll go from 37 degrees, who knows what. My goal, knowing that the drive by itself without a heat sink runs at 92 degrees, what we want to know is, can we establish 10 degrees less or even better than that? Because right now the points we have are at 61 degrees for the first copper heat sink, and I believe it was 69 degrees for the second copper heat sink, which was for a laptop, which really blew me away. Because 69 degrees is a lot better than I was than I was hoping or expecting. So will this be more effective than either one of those two or will it be in the middle? I have no idea. We will find out together. I do expect it'll run hotter than 61 degrees but I don't know how much hotter. So we're looking at a parameter between 61 and 69. 5,200 megabytes on the right. Good spec. We are at 64 degrees. Let's see how we do on the secondary number. 65, the one to beat is 69 degrees, 66, I would say that's pretty much in the middle between 61 and 69, 67, 68, whoa, back up there, so it's 68 degrees, 69 degrees, wow, this is exactly on par with just the copper plate, which, which fascinates me, I, I expected this to be right in the middle of the two, or better. This is no better than a flat piece of copper. That is most interesting. When the test stops, we'll stop. Looking at those temps, 59 degrees, 37 degrees, 69 and 56. Our top temperature was 69 degrees, our starting temperature was 37, and our current running temperature is 59. So at 69 degrees, that puts it exactly on par with just a piece of copper and a thermal pad. So the next question is, what can we do to improve the results of that? So now we know who our top two are. All that result will be in the summation, which will be a separate video from these six. And like I said, to reiterate, there may be a couple more we look at based on some of the things you guys have commented on because, uh, you know, in everything you do, change one thing changes everything. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. On to the next video. We're out.